Now in class, we looked at a couple interpolators, the two ones I recommend starting with. First, we looked at IDW, and now we're going to look at our next one. You may have noticed during the IDW video that um, I mentioned IDW does not estimate values above or below your known values. So we had no values, it would be below 47 or above 77. That's one of the benefits of IDW is getting to control how much spread you get in your data. But you may have something like temperature and you may know, Rachel, it's likely we had a temperature higher than 77 or maybe a temperature lower, average temperature lower than 47 last or two Aprils ago. How can we take into consideration those values that there might be something above and below the mean or above and below our known values? We do have another tool that you can see here called Spline. IDW, like I mentioned, and Spine are two of the best tools to start with because they require the least amount of knowledge of some of the more sophisticated settings, ugh, more sophisticated settings, more higher level geostatistical analyses, things like that. So they're a great place to start. So if you know you're likely to have values or you know you have values, like elevation values above, above or below your values um, listed on your data, check out Spline. Here we can see um, our tool, and it is interpolating our surfaces from our point features, which are our temperatures. We're again changing our z-value to our average temperature on that April day in 2019. Um, and if we just leave, it, let's just leave everything else default, except let's change our output cell size back to 100 meters. Actually, I gotta check the environments here to make sure we have them all set. Let me pause. Okay, and we'll go ahead and leave everything else default and click run. Okay, here we can see the results from our spline tool, which again is that uh, we're running that smooth surface through uh, exactly through all the input points. So um, we know that these points on the input will have that exact same uh, uh, out, uh, exact same value on the output. So temperatures on our inputs will be the same as the temperature on our output surface. Hang on. So here we have left all of our defaults. We have our first surface, um, and we can see it looks quite different than we saw with the IDW, um, which I should probably turn back on one of them. What was our first one? Oh, I was messing around with this one before I did this video, but you can see, you know, it looks very, it looks very different from the output um, from our IDW. One of the settings we have on our spline tool is uh, this option, the spline type. Uh, so spline is sometimes called rubber sheeting because you are taking that idea of that rubber sheet of data. And if you think about like resistance bands and exercise, um, running it through all of your known points. Um, so the flexibility of that resistance band um, depends on the spline type. So with our two options here, we have regularized, we also have tension. With regularized, you're using a resistance band, a lower level of resistance, more floppy, more free-flowing. Um, and you can see from the values in the output that they are uh, quite lower. Well, actually, they're not that much lower than our known point, but they are quite higher um, than our known point, which is uh, 77. So that's our little bit of a floppier one. We probably know we have values below 46 and above 77, but I don't know, 130 seems a little bit high. Um, so we could go back and change it to our tension method. Um, so we're changing to that tougher, stiffer uh, uh, resistance band, more tension in it, uh, more muscles to flex around um, our surface of points. Um, let's see, do I wanna change anything else? Um, so again, we'll have values above and likely above and below our known values, but it's going to keep them a lot closer to our values. Um, and there's a great graph on Canvas to demonstrate this for you. Um, so let's see, let's run this. And here we can see our output from our line tension. So let's look at the differences between the two. Gosh. How about I click on it? There we go. So you can start to see some of the distant differences. The other thing, and I didn't really do a good job of showing this before, but we can look up our uh, highs and lows on statistics 
of this. Like this. So we can see that it would be the minimum of 39 degrees, um, a high of 133. So that, again, that's our high, our high temperature, low temperature in the regular ice with tension. We can check those again. We can see minimum 45 high, maximum 91. So a lot closer to our values that we saw in our original data set. Which again, I have to pull up. I should have pulled up the actual values for you, but. Da, 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 da. So we can see, yeah, minimum 46, high 77. So, um, so with our tension model, we get values that are a lot closer to those values, um, closer to our original values. So it does give us some variation, it does give us those high points and those low points, um, but they're, they're not as high as that 133 that we were seeing here, which seems very high. Um, with Spline, you can, let me go back to the tool, you can change the number of points we're using. Um, so we like the tension method better, but we want to try to see what happens if we use fewer points. So let's go to eight on this one. Okay, so we can see our output with eight points and we can see how that starts to change. Oops. Change our Nope, not changing our points. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're a little slow to display. So swipey swipe. Well, I'll just turn it on and off. Doesn't seem to change it at all. Very interesting. Do you see the change between the regularized? But we're not seeing a ton of change between these two. I'll have to go back and check that. Um, but you should see a little bit of a difference between the two. Um, all right, so those are your two different interpolation tools. Next video, we'll be looking at um, density surfaces, I think.